Hello, and welcome to Unique Leaders Live. I'm Megan DiMartino. I want to share with you about Unique Leaders Live. And technically, what is Unique Leaders? Unique Leaders started uh, during the lockdown, basically. I've been doing lives for many years now on different subjects and different um, you know, directions. But what came to be is during the um, uh, March, April-ish last year, um, I was uh, working with StreamYard and I asked a friend of mine who has a directory for alternative uh, medical practitioners to come on and share about her journey of what brought her there to putting together this very successful journal. And it was so interesting from the re uh, reaction of people that people so enjoyed hearing this woman's story of what brought her to this uh, period of time in her career. And so I decided that I would just continue on. And so from there, I started asking others to join me. And from there, Unique Leaders was born. We're all unique leaders. People ask me all the time though, how did I start? How uh, did I know to do a skincare line? How did I know to develop a spa? Well, it is really this, the success is in my story. I started back many, many years ago, 50 years ago. And from there, the journey just evolved. So today I have a very accomplished author, speaker, and a wonderful person uh, with us. And his name is Bob Berg. And Bob is going to share with you the secret of his success and his journey from a young man in the uh, New England uh, world on to where it brought him to the Speaker's Hall of Fame and an uh, author, New York Times bestseller of the Go-Giver series. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce to you my dear friend, Bob Berg. What a nice introduction. Wow. Well, thank you, sir. It's all true. And it's, as I said, it's, uh, you know, Murphy's Law, want everything to be perfect for you, Bob. And oh, no. uh, something. Not an, not an issue in mind. I know that. I know that, too, about you. And as Elizabeth said, that she would put the uh, all the audio and all the visual in for us on uh, YouTube. And then, of course, it's going live right now, but she'll uh, doctor it up, so to speak. So, <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, on the podcast on iTunes. So with, you know, that beginning, though, Bob, um, I know a lot about you, but most people know the author, the speaker, the National Speaker Hall of Fame. But what was it and where did young Bob start? So tell us a little bit about young Bob. Well, young Bob was very fortunate to have great parents. So, the, you know, to set an example of, of you know, what 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 it should be to, you know, to, to live a life and to, and, and so forth. So I'm very, very fortunate in that regard. Um, not so fortunate was that I, I have, you know, that I had obsessive compulsive disorder, OCD from the time I was a little kid, but the, the challenge was that back then nobody really knew what that was. So it wasn't even diagnosed until I was 26. So that was a, that was a tough, tough thing. And, you know, it's something I've had to live with my entire life, but, um, so, uh, so aside from those those two, real good and real bad type of type of thing. Uh, growing up, I knew that I wanted to be a sportscaster. Actually, I knew I wanted to be a, the third baseman for the Boston Red Sox, but I soon realized I didn't have the talent for for that. That wasn't going to happen. But uh, did want to be a, a, a sportscaster, and actually began in radio, doing sports for a, a local station in Massachusetts where I where I grew up. Uh, uh, 
ended up having getting a job as a as a uh, news guy out in the midwestern United States really? as a reporter and then as a late night news anchor. So I did that for a little bit, uh, but uh, again realized that soon that that was not going to be my my calling. And I like to say I graduated into sales mm -hmm. and, uh, after floundering for a few months because I had no idea what I was doing. I had never had any formal sales training, and the company I was with the, didn't provide any. <laughs> uh, I fortunately uh, found myself in a bookstore one day where I saw two books. One was by, uh, and by the way, uh, this is really about 40 years ago when sales training wasn't as big a thing. You know, it was there, but it wasn't as well known. As it come to be, and I didn't even realize there was such a thing as books on on selling or cassette tapes, which back then you know cassette tapes. Mm -hmm. uh, but I I found a couple of books. So one was by Zig Ziglar, and one was by Tom Hopkins, two of the iconic sales trainers, teachers, leaders, sales people of the day, and and that really turned it all around for me because I had a methodology, I had a system that I could use for for sales, and. Uh, began to do quite well at it. And from there began to, to grow and get into personal development and really grow. So let's just go back for a second, because again, what, as I shared that it, I, my whole premise uh, at this point in my life is to give people hope and understanding that there's infinite possibilities. And, um, you know, when I'm visiting with my guests and everyone has a challenge, everyone, I don't care who you are, there's a story about something that people overcome um, and work with through their life. So like you shared back in the day, and you said two things, you know, from a spectrum standpoint, there was no, no such thing and special ed. And then the other was the fact that um, you know, internet and so forth didn't exist. So trainings, you know, were very different and the availability to information. So when you were a young man and in school through high school and then college, um, there was a story that you shared that I think is important for you to share with our guests is about what that um, counselor and I think it was college said to you that um, about... Um, Something about that, you know, um, about your future, about your future. Oh, well, I think that was my high school. Uh, oh, high school, okay. Yeah, my, my high school guidance counselor uh, who on, on graduation day, uh, you know, a after the ceremony was over and we were all walking off and I, I ran into him and, and he said, Berg, I'm surprised that I, I'm even seeing you here today. I never thought you'd make it. And and by the way, uh, you know, although that sounds kind of mean, he was actually a very, very nice man. Mm -hmm. It's just that I really did, you know, not attend. I mean, I I was gone more than I was there, and uh, you know, I I really I'm I'm surprised myself that I graduated. Right, <laughs> but, a, like you said, a testimony to your parents, I'm sure, and and your own personal determination within, because that that you know that. Uh, germination of that, who you are today was there. So, but I, that, you know, words are powerful. We all know that people talk about that all the time today. And so, you know, um, hearing that could have stopped anyone in their tracks, but you went on and went to college. Yeah, I, gra I, I got into college on academic probation, and I'm pretty sure I graduated on academic probation. <laughs> I just back then, I just I had no um, no patience for school, and I I didn't respect it. I didn't respect the process, and I, you know, of course, I regret that now. I, that's mm -hmm. it, I I wish I had I had it to do over again. I would have at least tried to learn how to learn. Yes, yeah, so it wasn't wasn't anybody's fault, and I hid a, hid a lot of that from my parents, and I really just kind of gutted my way through high school and college. And I mean, just the fact that I graduated was is um, you know pretty <laughs> significant. But but my my education really began after yes. I went to sales. Yes, and exactly. I learned that personal mm -hmm. development was what it was about, and that I had a lot to learn. Mm -hmm. and that I could do that through. Book, through books, mm -hmm. through again, cassette tapes, through going to seminars, through learning, right? And uh, I became an avid student. Uh, and, and, you know, behind you are your personal books, and that you're, we're seeing only one segment of Bob's <laughs> amazing library of personal development. And so he, you're like you're speaking 
about back in the day, you continue. You're can, a, an avid reader and continue to uh, learn. You're a student. You'll never stop being a student. Yeah, because I always say my, my home is comprised of books with some scattered furniture. Right, <laughs> and your and your and your babies, which we'll get into later. But um, so you uh, entered that world, and uh, in just absorbing Zig and John, uh, um, what's his name? John the Hopkins and, yes, John yeah. Hopkins. Um, Zig Ziglar was very foundational for myself as well. Yeah. But very much so. Yes, for sure. <laughs> but, uh, but anyhow, so you just absorbed, absorbed, and what type of sales were you in? I began in in advertising sales for um, you know for radio and television, um, and uh, eventually I uh, did that for a couple of different, a few different companies actually. Uh, and then I was also uh, I sold solar energy hot water heaters to homeowners. Wow! Yeah, that was I love that because uh, it was a great product, and and uh, you could help people take advantage of tax credits, but also. And it was a very big ticket item. And so it was it was kind of combined just so many wonderful areas. Uh, and it's where I really, I think more than any of uh, anything else where I really learned how to sell. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed that a lot and met some wonderful, wonderful customers. And, you know, you have shared in that, that one of the things, like you said, wonderful customers that, and you said you learned about uh, sales during that uh, season, but when you're visiting with the, you had shared that uh, visiting with the homeowners, you realized how important that personal relationship with the the customer was. Oh yeah, and I I really and I remember one of the most important pieces of advice I ever received from someone. And it happened to be while I was in a sales slump. And so I was really placing the focus on myself, which of course is the absolute worst thing to do in any kind of sales, especially mm -hmm. when you're in a slump, right? But it's mm -hmm. very natural. And and he said to me, uh, Berg, he was a last name kind of guy. He said, Berg, if you want to make a lot of money in sales, he said, don't have making money as your target. Your target is serving others. Mm -hmm. Now, when you hit the target, he said, you'll get a reward and that reward will come in the form of money and you can do with that money whatever you choose. But never forget, he said, the money is simply the reward for hitting the target. It yeah. isn't the target itself. Your target mm -hmm. is serving others. And you know, Megan, that was really my epiphany because it's where I realized that great salesmanship is never about the salesperson. Mm -hmm. Great salesmanship is never about the product or service, as important as those are. Mm -hmm. Great salesmanship is about the other person. Mm -hmm. It's about adding value to the lives of those people you're working with. It's about, it's about another person's life being better simply because you are part of it. Mm -hmm. and when we are, and that's the same thing with you and your your skincare line and your spa. It's never about those things. Mm -hmm. It's about all the people whose lives you touch by just by being in it and their being able to come to your spa or use your products. And, mm -hmm. and I remember Kathy Tajanel, a great friend of both of ours, my longtime business partner and dear friend, how when she went to your spa and how she felt afterwards. Mm -hmm. There, you know, I say uh, it, the definition of spa is a special pampering attitude. <laughs> From the moment the uh, the uh, individual calls, you know, so how you answer the phone, how you engage with that person from the moment they come to say hello and so forth. And then to when they leave. So it is it's so, yes, obviously you need to have good products and you have to know what you're doing, but it is how you make people feel 100 percent, Bob. 100%. So you were um, doing very well. You were growing. And now, by the way, was this, did you come back to um, the New England area? Did you come back to Boston or did, was that in the Midwest when you yeah, were all, all in the Midwest, but I okay. did come back to Boston for a short while before I moved down to uh, Florida. I see. That's okay. where, this is where I've been for about 33 years now, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so when you came to Florida, were you still in sales or did you you had an end. How did you evolve into the, uh, yeah. the phase of your career? 
is still in in sales, but I was uh, doing yeah, sales was not. I mean, but um, I knew I wanted to speak at that point, uh, but I was not yet ready to to take that full time plunge. So I did a couple of other things to just to make ends meet. But it was really uh, once I went into my own business in terms of the uh, uh, in terms of speaking. That's when it really. That's when I really began to feel, you know, like I was on on track. Well, you know, there are so many people that uh, now the world has changed in a year. So the speaking stages have not been, but now they're doing summits and forums and whatever they're called. Um, but from a speaking and you see on the Internet, you know, training for speakers and the like, you just made a statement. You said, I realized or knew I wanted to go into speaking. Uh, why did you feel that? What was it about where you were that made you compelled to, um, you know, take your message uh, out there to the masses, so to speak? I think there were three things about it that I thought I'd really, you know, that 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 would make it a fit. One is that uh, I just loved it. <laughs> right, I just enjoyed it. Yeah, you know, sharing information. It wasn't the speaking. It wasn't the being on stage, although that's oh, that's a fun part of it. But it was mm -hmm. just sharing. Uh, a system with others that you knew was really helpful. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it's just something about that that is just a, it's it's something I personally derive a lot of energy from. Mm -hmm. uh, it made me feel good about that. So something I enjoyed, something that I felt was of value to others and the potential to earn a really nice income doing that. Mm -hmm. I think when we can have all three aspects of a job, you know, it's... It's, you it's know, a win-win. It's a win-win. <laughs> Now, again, people aspire to that, uh, all three. And uh, um, so in uh, from today, I know it's different than years back, but today, what would you suggest to a person who has that aspiration and that goal and dream to th uh, the best way to start? What, what would you suggest people to do? Well, you start by learning the business itself. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you 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 uh there's fortunately there's some great books out there written by some very successful people like lois kramer and uh, uh david newman and jane atkinson who talk about speaking as a business mm -hmm. how to run a speaking business i would suggest that you that the person look into joining national speakers association and the local chapter and uh so the, the information's out there and i think like anything else like any other business you first you seek out and first you you know what it is you want to do you're right, right. You, you mm -hmm. determine what is what is your goal what's your dream what is it, what is it that you want to then learn the system for doing it what is a system a uh, system my definition of a system is simply the um the system is the program a system yeah, learn, yeah right learn the system learn the methodology yeah, yeah the methodology what, you, yeah. what it is you want to do Right, uh, and then uh, start. Just take action. Start doing it, and then be uh, persistent because you know there's going to be a lot of no's along the way. Mm -hmm. uh, and, what year was it that you started actually speaking uh, on stage? Uh, I started back in I think 1989 was my first year, and so that's a while ago. Mm -hmm. So just continuing on. Mm -hmm. um, in the in the whole genre, so you are like they say about me with uh, you know my my clinical medical grade skincare. I'm a pioneer, so you are um, one of those pioneers and of what we know speaking today. Would you agree? Well, I mean, there were so many people before me that, that I know. Had, uh, you know set the, know. the path I for know. me, but I've uh, I've been at it a long time. I'm long in the tooth, mm -hmm. as they say. Mm -hmm. You know, so I've been doing it for quite a while now. And so you were speaking, and then where did you, um, how and where did the Go Giver uh, series start? I don't think that was your first book. Uh, so how did the writing begin? No, actually, my first book was called Endless Referrals, Network Your Everyday Contacts into Sales. And that was a book for salespeople and entrepreneurs who, you know, they knew they had a great product or service, but they didn't feel comfortable going out and creating the relationships in their uh, communities that would that would lead to people mm -hmm. wanting to do business with them personally and referring them to others. So that was really a how-to book. Um, uh, 
the go giver was, you know, basically because I thought, wouldn't it be great if we could take the basic premise that all things being equal, people will do business with and refer business to those people they know, like, and trust, mm -hmm. and turn that into a story, into a mm -hmm. parable. I'd always enjoyed reading parables. I think stories connect on a heart to heart level in yes. a way that how to books don't. Yes. Uh, so, the, but the best thing I did was asking John David Mann to be the co author and the lead writer because I'm a how to guy. He's a brilliant, brilliant writer. Mm -hmm. brilliant author and fortunately he agreed to do that and so we uh collaborated on it and it kind of took off and now we've had a, a series of a, a you know a number of books and i have right here which i have in my office all the time the five laws of stratospheric success and um this was hanging at the Novitas Spa Medical Rejuvenation wow. Clinic for um, uh, maybe three years, um, and um, it may still be there. But uh, but basically, it is if if you our guests, if you are not familiar with the Go Giver series, you must Google it and go on Amazon and um, or wherever and. Um, and purchase this book because it is, and I go to it often. Um, and there's others, there's now four books in the series, Bob. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, um, and so it is just, uh, I visit back to them. Like I do Ogmandino. I, that's what I said to you the first time I met you. Um, I said, you know, you remind me of, uh, Ogmandino. Well, that's a and, compliment. Thank you. Well, there's so many things about like the the material, but also you as a person as well, and it uh, the you know the um, greatest salesman in the what, what, the title, yeah, the greatest yeah, salesman, yeah. the ten scrolls. So it's you know so here you have done all of this, and then I think in 2018 could be 19, but I think it was 18. You were um, received the um, uh, the oh, CPA. Yes, from the Speakers Association. Yes. So these are not, uh, these are folks, these are things that um, we all, you know, aspire to, to, to really be the, um, you know, attain that level of success and uh, live your legacy, as Sharon Lecter uh, speaks to Bob, you know, and um, it's just, but you've had other things to overcome. Uh, and to uh, work through and look as an author, as a speaker, as a you know very successful salesperson in the beginning, but a thought leader today. And uh, how many people do you, I, I hear? You know Kendrick Shope and on and on say, you know that um, when she was in sales, how and I as well. It was introduced uh, to your books, you know, by people. So it's. Um, you know, today, what are you doing? And I know you have a program for speakers. And uh, so tell us, uh, share a little bit with our guests what you're doing today to really continue your legacy. Well, I'm no longer on the road speaking. I've decided mm -hmm. to take myself, even after COVID, to take myself off the road. So I'm only doing, I'm still speaking, but I'm just doing it on uh, um uh, through the computer. So, mm -hmm. so still speaking at conferences and conventions, just as long as they don't mind me not being there in person and being on the on the computer doing it. And of course, Kathy Tage and Ellen and I have our certified go-giver speaker program, which is a licensing program. We have people all over the world doing that. And we develop some, uh, some online courses. And uh, within the next week, we should be uh, opening our membership community, which is called the Go-Giver Success Alliance. Membership. Excellent. Excellent. I'm very excited about that. Very much so. Because the, all of this brings it all to life and everything you have done for these years and giving the tangible tools to people to be able to um, glean your knowledge and the uh, success and those er, those black and white tools, because that is so important Thank to you. continue on. Well, we had a little uh, glitch in the beginning, so cut into it, but I think we've covered everything that uh, I wanted to. But before I let you go, I have to ask you the questions that I ask every person that um, is my guest. I'm sure you're familiar with Three Feet from Gold, Sharon Lecter, and uh, Greg Reed. And in that story, um, in the beginning, and it's it's a somewhat autobiographical uh, with Greg, but in the beginning, it speaks to this uh, gentleman who was from the East Coast in the gold rush days, came West, bought his 
his property, was chiseling away, you know, for his riches, and um, then gave up, was frustrated, and gave up and sold his little vein potential there and uh, to a townie. And that guy just continued on and in three feet struck gold. In that book, there is uh, a, what Sharon calls her success formula. <clears throat> and it's your passion plus talent times association plus action plus faith equals success. Now, I'm not going to ask you all of those. But Bob, what would you say is your passion and your talent? Oh, I would say my passion is for uh, animals and my passion is for um, advocating for the free market. Um, my passion, I'd say, is probably above all else, it's making people feel genuinely good about themselves. It's encouraging people. It's mm -hmm. letting them know that they have a lot to offer mm -hmm. and, you know, helping them do what it takes to, to be able to do that. And your talent? I'd say it's it's empathizing with people, being able to teach, being able to bring out the best in people, sometimes a lot more than they, they think they know that they have inside them. That's right. And that is what Unique Leaders is about, to go within and see that we all have that ability to continue on, to take what God has given us and work with it and uh, just follow those dreams, goals, and aspirations. And like you said, take action and don't stop. So uh, that is the foundation of Unique Leaders and which you truly are, Bob. And thank you for joining me today. You? Thank you. I appreciate you so much. So why don't you just hang in the green room for a minute, Bob, if just one minute, and uh, we'll be right back. Thank you all for uh, joining Bob and I today. I hope you enjoyed uh, all that Bob had to share. Bob is not only a unique leader, but he is a pioneer, as I uh, said to Bob, as well as a person that we just really should follow and really ascribe to learn from. He has so much information. So truly go to the uh, Endless Referrals was the book that I first was introduced to, but then the Go-Giver series post that. And um, it will not be a waste of your time. It truly has great nuggets and great information and millions and millions of people have been touched by this. With that said, if you have, if you would, please share this out so other people can glean from Bob's information today. And also just know that this will be and is on YouTube. So go and uh, revisit this uh, segment, but also subscribe to it. And then next week, it will be on uh, iTunes and all of the other podcasting platforms. So I truly appreciate you joining us today. I, again, hope you enjoyed um, a little bit of uh, Bob uh, gleaning from Bob Berg, and we will see you next week on Unique Leaders Live, next Friday at 4 Central Time. Have a blessed weekend, and again, thank you.